It's a walk-off for the Toronto Blue Jays as they beat the Atlanta Braves and win the series 6-5 in 10 innings and extras. Jays have now won back-to-back -back ball games with the victory. They're now game over 500 at 13 and 12 on the season. And it was a roller coaster ride of emotions in this game. There are so many things that I want to talk about in this video, and it might be a pretty long one. So hey, take a seat, grab a beverage. And, and, and enjoy. It didn't start out great for Blue Jay fans. Top of the first inning, George Springer ground ball, he gets thrown out, but bef just before he gets to first base, grabs the inside of his leg on, his, on the way he's running to first base, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 this is not going to be happening. This is not happening. He just took forever to come back, and he is not going to get hurt again. And we're all kind of sitting here holding our breath because, you know, as much as we're watching the ball game, we're like, oh, sorry, right. we want to see the Jays win. Let's just go out there. No, no. But in the back of our mind, you're still thinking, is Springer going to be hurt? Is he going to leave this game? Top half of the second inning, Tommy Malone goes out there and he gets the first two guys out. I'm like, all right, good stuff. Decides to load the bases and Pache hits a grand slam. Okay, that, that was awful. You know, just like that, the Jays are down 4 nothing. So great. Early on in this game, Springer could be gone with an injury, and you just give up a grand slam and you're down 4 nothing early. Not a good start to the ball game. To bottom half of the third inning, Alejandro Kirk at the dish. He ends up getting on base. I think he, he draws a walk, I think it was. I can't remember what he did. I think it was a walk that he drew. And he goes to first base, and he, he's laboring. And out comes the trainer. They tell him go for a little run and come back. He seems okay at the time. Later leaves the ball game. Okay, this is not a good start at all to today. Good news though. George Springer makes his next appearance at the plate right after Kirk gets on. And he takes a fastball from Charlie Morton on the outer half and crushes it. Oppo Taco Springer Dinger. His first bomb of the year for the Toronto Blue Jays. A two-run shot. Cuts the deficit in half. It's now a 4-2 game. All right. So Springer made the at-bat. That's great. You cut the deficit in half. It's good. He seems okay. 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 Great things happening in the third. Top half of the fifth inning. Acuna hits a solo shot. It's now a 5-2 ball game. All right, not where you want to be. You're down three. It's not looking pretty here early on. However, the Blue Jays' offense is damn good. They will not quit. Bottom half of the sixth inning. Couple batter, a couple runners on. V uh, Randall Gritchick hits an RBI single. Vladdy comes across to score. All right, it's a 5-3 ball game. Okay, good stuff. Let's keep the train rolling here. Next up. Lourdes Gurriel Jr., he doubles down the first ba uh, the third baseline. Around comes, um, who was it that came around to score? Uh, Teoscar Hernandez comes around to score, 5-4. Round comes Gritchick, and he gets thrown out of the plate. You're down 5-4 now. You're right there, and the time run was right there. <sighs> I, want that. I wanted that one real bad. Because it would have tied the ball game and you, you would have had a t uh, Lourdes at third with only one away. But instead he gets thrown out. I understand Louis Rivera's reasoning for sending Gretchik because Osuna has an absolute noodle arm out there in left field. So he can't do anything. But Swanson went out there and, and gave him a really short relay. So that was really smart on his part uh, to, to, to have the short relay to get it in quick and to get Gritchick out at the plate. But you've got, you got two runs, you're only down by one, and it's only the sixth inning. You still have the seventh, eighth, and ninth to get back in this ball game. Let's move ahead to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Uh, uh, what's his face? <laughs> George Springer at the dish again. They throw the ball over his head. <laughs> Jays fans, there's an old Jay player that we all know and love. When you throw at him, or I, I, on purpose or not, what usually happens after that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because I don't know who it was. I think it was Charlie Morton. I don't think he was on the mound. It was somebody else on the mound. And George Springer gets a fastball up in the zone, maybe even out of the strike zone. And he gets barreled a ball and pulls it to left field. And look, when I say it's way gone, I mean, like, it is still going. I mean, that ball still has not dropped there in Dunedin. George Springer. Hit that ball 116 miles an hour. 116. And he hit it 470 feet. 
That is the fourth longest home run in Blue Jays history in the StatCast era, going back to 2016. So it's really not, you know, all that long. But considering this is his third game as a Blue Jay and he literally just jumped into the top four, he absolutely clobbered that ball. And that is the longest home run of his career. And that is the hardest hit ball of his career in his third game as a Blue Jay. And Springer has his second Springer dinger of the day. And the Blue Jays have tied the game at five. Like I said off the bat, a roller coaster of emotions in this game. Now the offense for both teams kind of kind of quiet down for the rest of the, uh, the rest of the ball game. Really, nothing in the uh, nothing in the eighth for both teams. Nothing in the ninth for both teams. Bullpen did their job. We go to the top of the tenth inning. Jordan Romano goes out there and puts in the work. For his first, you know, obviously his. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna count his first outing off the IL. His first high leverage situation since coming off the IL, other than that one that he didn't pitch well in, which he shouldn't have been in. And he was unreal. We'll talk about the stats in a little bit, but he was great. Didn't allow a run. We go to the bottom of the 10th inning. Oh, yeah. And bottom of the 10th inning, you got Bo Bichette coming up. Vladdy and Teoscar. Look, this is a recipe for beautiful things to occur. Bo Bichette, and, and es it was initially supposed to be Springer at second base, but they pinch run Espinal. Smart move in Charlie's point. You know, I, I, No doubt you should have done that. And Bo Bichette leads off with a line drive right at the shortstop. Oh, and he was not happy. Goes in the dugout, slams his bat down. I don't blame him. That was a hard hit ball right at the shortstop. They intentionally walk Vladdy. Makes sense. You got two on, double play in order now. Makes sense. Teoscar Hernandez hits a ground ball to short and just barely beats out the throw to first. Ladies and gentlemen, kids watching, that is how you play the game of baseball. How many times in past Blue Jay years have we seen guys just jog out a ground ball double play and end the inning? Teoscar Hernandez busts his tail down the line, beats out the throw from Ozzie Albies at second base to first, and he's he's on first, and Gritch ends up at third, or, no, sorry, Espinal at third base, bringing up Kevin Biggio. Now, Teoscar Hernandez moves up on the defensive indifference, and up comes Kevin Biggio. He has been awful all night, 0 for 4. He has not looked comfortable at the dish at all. One at bat, he watched three pitches for strikes and struck out looking. I don't know what he was thinking. And he's had a horrendous season. He gets in a favorable count, 3-1. Okay, well, maybe we, can, maybe we can get a clutch knot from him. The Braves decide to, to, to intentionally walk him. And I'm thinking to myself, what in God's green, beautiful, gracious earth are the Braves thinking? Bichio has not been able to hit a beach ball all year. He hasn't been able to hit a beach ball all night. He clearly didn't look comfortable at the plate. A lot of check swings and the one strike that he did that they did have against him, he should have swung at. But all right, base is loaded now for Randall Grichik. And what does Grichik decide to do? Rips a base hit up the middle to walk the ball game off. Espinal comes around to score. And right as Grichik hits it, arm goes up in the air, pointing at the dugout and the fans, even though they're probably three-quarter Braves fans because <laughs> we can't go down there to watch our team play. It's a walk-off, and Bo and Vladdy, the first two people to absolutely mob Grichik. And who's there, like, fourth? Oh, you're damn right Springer's in the mix of that. But I'm thinking to myself, hey, he, he, Springer, I love the celebration. I love the enthusiasm, but just stay, please. Just be, be easy on yourself, bud. Because you're just a gigantic part of this team. What a ball game. What a flipping 4 nothing comeback. You had to come back from 4 nothing, and then at one point it was a three-run three, three run deficit 5-2. You came back from it twice, and you win it 6-5. This is the offense that we were expecting to see right out of the gate this year. That It is a long baseball season, everybody. You cannot expect this team to crush it at all times. They had a slow start. Now they got Hernandez and Springer back. It lengthened out to line up, and now what you're seeing this team can do. It's incredible to watch. Right. Let's get to these stats before I bring up bring up another situation in this game that really is not going to get talked about a lot. But I wanted to bring it up. Uh, George Springer, obviously a big ball game for him. Two for five in the game, had the two home runs, three RBIs, and scored a couple of runs. A big day at the dish for Springer in the leadoff spot. And uh, Randall Grichik, two for five with two RBIs. Uh, look, people can talk about how Grichik's this, Grichik's that. Oh, he's going to drop down. He's going to be inconsistent. He just walked it off for you, and he's had a very good start to his year. 
He's had, what, three walk-offs as a Toronto Blue Jay, his fourth in his career. And he's just been nothing but good this season. I, I, I He's been great. He's been sound defensively when he's out there. And with the bat, he's just looking a lot He's he's looking a lot more calm, right? He's not out there chasing a lot of pitches. He's going to chase once in a while, but he looks a lot better at the dish. Now, Travis Bergen got the opening job today. He look, am, I, am I smelling some Wilmer Font action with Travis Bergen? He went a clean inning. No hits, no walks, no strikers. Just a clean job for him going through the 1-2-3 of the uh, of the Braves lineup. So great start to that ball game. And as I mentioned, Tommy Malone, uh, not a fan favorite. Kind of giving me that Edwin Jackson feel. Whenever he's out there, he gives up runs. It's not what I want to feel when a guy's on the mound. Uh, he went two and a third, allowed six hits, four runs, obviously the grand slam. And it seems like he only really has one bad inning or one bad hit that he gives up in a game, but it's usually a monster one. All right, Trent Thorne went out there and went through two innings, allowed three hits, one uh, one run, four strikeouts in a walk. He allowed the solo shot to Acuna. And and look, he, he gave Tim Meza a really tough situation. I think it was in the, what is it, the top of the sixth inning? I can't remember. I think it was the sixth inning. I, I could be totally off with that, guys. You guys, it was fifth or sixth. But Tim Meza goes out there, right? And he's got a, I don't know if he went out there in the bases loaded situation. No matter what, there was a bases loaded situation. What does he decide to do? Tim Meza gets the ground ball double play to end the inning. Can you imagine if that did not happen? The Blue Jays probably would have lost this ball game. But like I mentioned, that's not going to get talked about a whole lot because it's not some glamorous stat. But that right there could have been that turning TSN turning point uh, in that ball game. Because if it was in the top of the sixth inning, which I th I th I'm pretty sure it was, you were already down 5-2. They were looking to really blow this game wide open. But you get the double play the next half inning. You score two runs. It's 5-4. You go out there in the next half inning, quick inning, back on the bats. Springer ties the game. Can you imagine if Meza allowed a runner or two? Great job for Tim Meza. And then the rest of the bullpen have been automatic this year. T uh, David Phelps has been unbelievable. He went an inning, allowed one hit, two strikeouts. Great job for Phelps. Uh, Tyler Chatwood's been unbelievable since coming off the IL. One inning, one hit, struck out two. He, he's been fantastic. Rafael Delis, since that rough start to the year, as I mentioned, he's been unbelievable since then. One inning, walked one, but that was it. It's a great job for him. And Jordan Romano, as I mentioned, a great, great job for him for his first outing back in a, in a high leverage situation other than that stupid first one that he shouldn't have been out there for. One inning, one strikeout. For Jordan Reynolds, by the way, that, the, the Mesa thing was what I was going to talk about is it doesn't get talked about a whole lot. That's what I was going to mention, and I mentioned it in there when I was talking about Tim Mesa. Next game for the Blue Jays, they look for the, uh, I'm not going to say it, but you know what they're looking for tomorrow afternoon. It is not going to be an easy test tomorrow. I mean, we knew with the bullpen day and Charlie Morton on the mound, it was not going to be easy today. We knew that for a fact. Tomorrow, it's going to be even, even more difficult. Ian Anderson gets the ball for the Atlanta Braves, arguably their ace. He's an amazing pitcher. He's a fantastic arm. And the Blue Jays, it looks like they have Ross Stripling coming off the I.L. That's the pitching matchup tomorrow afternoon. It's a 107 first pitch. It, I don't know what to expect tomorrow. By the way, Blue Jay fans, if you don't follow Blue Jay Center on Instagram, please go do so. I'll be going live with young Blue Jay prospect Manuel Beltre tomorrow at 7 p.m. on the Blue Jay Center IGTV, uh, on the IG Live. So go check that out. At 7 o'clock, set your clocks, set your, set your timers. All right, really on your phone. I don't know why I'm doing watch. Someone wears watches nowadays. So go check that out, guys, tomorrow night. It's going to be a lot of fun talking to him and, and, and kind of getting the experience of what an international free agent goes through, kind of that process towards signing and what he's up to and where he is and all that stuff. Can't wait to talk to him tomorrow night. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this long video. If you liked the game, if you enjoyed the game and enjoyed the video, smack that like button. I do appreciate that. If I missed anything in this game, let me know. Uh, is, hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below everything. Your feelings, your thoughts about Springer, your thoughts about Kirk, your worriness about Kirk possibly going on the IL and Danny Jansen being the full-time starter right now. Everything. Let me know in the comments below. And if Kirk hits the IL, who comes up? Riley Adams? Maybe a Reese McGuire look? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But hopefully Kirk does not hit the IL because I do not want him gone at all. 
All right? So, guys, comment down below everything towards this game. The Blue Jays, the way they've been playing lately, go crazy in the comments below, guys. Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up some EDM. Do all that great stuff. The Instagram link is down below, so follow up there if you've not done so already. And I will talk to you guys. Raptors edition very shortly. As they're, in, they're in Utah taking on the Jazz. Uh, that game, I think, is in the second half now. So, we'll talk to you guys post-game then. As for the Leafs, their next game is on Monday night in Montreal taking on the Habs. Looking to continue this great winning streak that they've been on. And continue to build heading into the playoffs. Only five games remain for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And as for the Blue Jays, as I mentioned, they continue their, their uh, home series against the Atlanta Braves. The finale goes tomorrow afternoon. It's a 107 first pitch. Ian Anderson on the mound for the Atlanta Braves. And Ross Stripling gets the ball for the Blue Jays, I'm assuming. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.